What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Black Ink Crew. Season 8, Episode 7, Money Makers, Booty Shakers, and Deal Breakers. Okay? Um, not much happened in this episode, so we're going to zoom right past it. Y'all already know. Um, Sky came back this episode, and she overheard everything that was going on in the shop. Okay? So, you know, she got the HR rule that basically everybody needs to be fucking everybody. So that's what they was down there doing. Um, she did meet up with London to get her take on what was going on, trying to integrate her back in the group because she wants to go, um, have this like little spiritual cleansing of everyone and they supposed to be going someplace and they get ready to go to the place and they get two sprinters. They waiting forever for Ted to show up and he's not there because he over there fucking around with London. Oh yes, him and London damn it made the shit official, you know, and we already saw that coming. He meet up with her, have a little date night with her or whatever, talking about everything that was going on. And to on a one point I can understand London's frustration because of the simple fact that yes, Puma is the one that brought her into the shop. Puma is the one that said it's cool to have that pool party. And Puma didn't have her back. So I get that, her back or whatever. So I get that frustration. But I'm like, girl, you rolling down the wrong path fucking around with this nigga Ted. But okay, do what you wanna do, eight hey, um Miss Therapist. Okay. Moving on from that, um, what else is going on? At the beginning of the episode, you got Tati, uh, Donna, Jumbe, Crystal, you know, and Kitty. They have a little party bus, and then that's when Sky first pops on the scene. And Sky was like, you know, Tati, there's a warrant out for your arrest for um attacking uh London out there. And uh, wait a minute. So these this show was out of order. I just realized that because. When she said for beating up London or whatever, you know, then you go later on into the scene when Sky finally comes into the shop and that's when they let them know that, um, let her know that there was an issue between Tati and, 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 and London. She was like, yeah, I hit her or whatever. And it was like, when? All this stuff. Girl, I just figured this shit out. I said, no wonder why. Okay. But on this bus scene, they should have put this to the last. Okay. They should have switched the positions, you know, of this thing. Um, basically, she made it seem like a cop was gonna come and get her. You know, she had a warrant for her arrest because London pressed charges against her, or whatever, for attacking her in uh, Memphis and all that stuff. And what wind up being, I said, y'all should have known that this girl was playing games, okay? It's guys, she don't fuck with the cops like that, okay? But it was just a little joke to bring a stripper on board, of course, and that's all that really happened right then and there. Um, what else wind up happening in this episode? Like I said, Ted fucking around with London. Caesar, Ted has a problem with Puma, okay? And I honestly, to be quite honest, I'm not necessarily mad at Ted for feeling the way that he feels, okay? He's basically saying to um, um, Caesar, just be cautious, Okay? I feel like you're doing too much too soon. They're going out to look at sh uh, shops. The thing, the shop in Memphis didn't work out. So they're over there at Best Eye Brooklyn, you know. They're going looking at a couple of shops. And one shop was already practically, you know, renovated already. But it was smaller. Another shop, it was way bigger that they needed, you know, so they can do a little bit more stuff. But they had to do some renovations in there. And Puma was all here for the big shop. Ted was all here for the almost fully furnished, almost um done shop, okay, the smaller one. And he was getting his feelings because Caesar is mostly listening to Puma. And according to Caesar, Caesar's like, I don't know if it's jealousy because Ted did bring him outside to see if his mind is, you know, just telling him to slow down a little bit. Because you like he's like tunnel vision right now. And I get where Ted is coming from. And the fact that Puma hasn't been back and now he, Puma, will also be a partner in this shop as well. And so, you know, you, 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 you trying to slow up, okay? He was like this, he squashed the beast between him and Puma. That's fine and dandy, but you still need to err on the side of caution, okay? And I feel like that's what Ted is coming from. I don't think it's a jealousy thing. I just think he's trying to be real cautious with everything that's been going on. So, just in case something else happened and y'all have another falling out and, you know, people won't get fucked over and stuff like that. So, moving on from that, you know, he do wind up signing the leash to the bigger shop and all that stuff and... That's what prompted Ted to have the conversation with him. Um, Mike. 
band. Mm. This actually touched me in this whole episode. I'm telling you, look how I'm almost through with the episode. Listen, this probably touched me the most in this episode because of the fact that I already told y'all how I feel about that. I don't care if you're not sure. Let that person know. Go get that DNA test. Don't wait years later to tell somebody. And just like Mike said, he may not remember, the son may not remember what went on those five years of him not being in his life, but he has to live with that. You know, especially given Mike's story of the fact that he grew up without a father. You know what I'm saying? His father's in prison. And, you know, he wanted to do things different and he missed out. If this boy turns out to be his child, he missed out on a lot of things. And I know we assume that's what we do. That's natural to assume things. But still, that girl should have said something to just about whoever she thought was the baby daddy. And then did the process of elimination and got the DNA test and all that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, y'all was young. Y'all still young. You still, whoever the father is, you still... Took away five years from them trying to get into this child's life, you know. And I felt so bad for Mike. I really... Mike, let me tell you something, okay? I don't usually like to like Bryce like that. But you are a fine-looking man, okay? You really are. And let me just say this. um, Don't get no tattoos on your face because your skin is just like butter. It's smooth, okay? I was like, oh, ain't no bumps, ain't no dents, ain't nothing. Baby, his shit, I said, let me rub it. Let me just rub it. You know what I'm saying? He is cute. He's a cutie pie. He's a cutie pie. He probably be turning cute ass out. Okay? Turn that bitch inside out. But um, anyway, and whatever, bitch, you be fucking. But whatever, that was that. Was that. So they are going to get the paternity test. And, you know, she, I felt like she felt what he was coming from because she was about to tear up. She was trying not to tear up, too. And I really felt like he was not putting on for the cameras. I really felt like that he was sincerely and genuinely meant everything that he said out of his mouth. Um, That whole situation with Puma and, not Puma, but Walt and um Jessica. Walt, it's technically not your decision to decide what a woman to should do or will do with her body that's why you're supposed to talk about these things before you get so deep into a relationship and like she said you can't necessarily be upset at her because she don't want to have kids with you because that's a decision that she came to her own way before you okay unless i feel like it's really selfish of him and i know he said i didn't say i wanted to go have sex or go go have a um, baby with somebody else i wanted to have it with you that's understandable and i get that but sometimes you have to adjust and like y'all was saying in the comments um, what happened to the other lady that was saying that what was that baby? Um, the baby dad, uh, the baby daddy to that little baby baby. Was that him or was that somebody else? Girl, let us know, okay? You know, because we only know about the two that you keep showing. But what about that baby baby? But, um, you're talking about some, you're, and you're not, she, because she said she was a single mother. She had to go through shelters and all this stuff. She didn't have no help. But you'll have me. I'm all up in my kid's life. You're in your kid's life certain times throughout the year when they when you can afford to bring them out there to visit you and stuff like that. And I'm not trying to put down on him. You know, he probably is active like, you know, calling on the phone, FaceTiming and stuff like that. That is cute. That is making time and doing what you got to do. But you just have to understand that women bodies, especially once they get to a certain age, they can't go through all of that. Yes, we may still have menstrual cycles, but that's not saying that anything else can go wrong. You know they call um, pregnancies over the age of 35 and up geriatric pregnancies, okay? And that's the time period where anything can happen to the baby and uh, while it's developing. The development, uh, mental, physical, all that stuff can be off, you know? And you got to err on the side of caution again. Also, you know, the baby can't come out perfectly healthy. Also, something can happen to the mother as holding that. But you honestly don't know. And the one thing that did not make me, that made me irk me, I should say, is the fact that you could tell that he wasn't taking in consideration of the fact that can she even have kids anymore? Is her body able to go through that? Do you think it's something that may be preventing that? Did you ask her? To, you didn't do that. 
you know, you just automatically assume and get in your feelings that, you know, she didn't want to have your baby just because she didn't want to have your baby, you know, and she has every right to feel the way that she feels and you have right to feel the way that you feel, but she would be the one that, ha I feel like she has more rights than this because she's the one that had to put her body through that trauma. Getting pregnant and delivering the baby is trauma and it's so much more when you're up in age, okay? Y'all not spraying chickens and baby, you don't need to start over no more. You need to shelter the ones that you have now that's what it is okay but um <clears throat> i really hope that this don't tear them apart because like i said i like seeing them together and they was happy you know i hope they um able to you know come to a compromise because sometimes people can't compromise and they be like listen i don't want to have no kids but i think about it maybe my mind or my mood will change and listen babe but then again i don't want you to um be looking at me like Oh, you made me have this baby or oh, you didn't have my child or whatever. So you you um feeling resentful or whatever. It's a tricky situation. Y'all tell me what y'all would do. But moving on from that, when they going out on a trip or whatever today's supposed to be going, baby, the car broke down. And my whole thing was it's two sprinters. And one of those sprinters where everybody and their mama was in, it was a whole back seat that was still open. Y'all all couldn't get up in that back seat and go ahead to where y'all needed to go while y'all fixed the other car. Girl, get out of here. And when Scott came back off that bus with that stage and her titties and ass out, and that lady walked past or drove past and said, put some clothes on, you freak. I said, bitch, that was a white woman right there. <laughs> and then Mike, Mike, I ain't need to see that. I did not ask to see that, okay? You put your clothes back on. You say that for cute. Okay, but anyway, that was Black Ink Crew. If I missed something, y'all put it in the comments, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.